All right, we want to greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're grateful to everyone that's here today. So uh, here a couple of weeks ago, we started a series on prayer, and I think it's very important that we uh, understand how important prayer is. There's many people that uh, try to develop a relationship with the Lord and uh, try to do things uh, in the kingdom of God, but without having a prayer life. And prayer is not just words being spoken to God. Uh, there's a way to uh, approach God and there's a way to do things uh, and things have to be done uh, in, in uh, the way that God have called for them to be done. Uh, for example, when Samuel was a little boy, the Lord came and spoke to him but he didn't know it was the Lord. And so it was Eli, his mentor, that taught him how to answer the Lord. Lord, your servant heareth, hear am I, in other words, and so speak. And so that's when the Lord began to speak to him about what he wanted to tell him. But you see how the Lord was waiting on that protocol? So there was the Lord in, in Samuel's room speaking to him, and he allowed Samuel to run right past him into uh, Eli's room, and, and, and that was, uh, what was it, three times, uh, the second two times he ran past him. And so you see how um, the Lord, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't answer ignorance, if that makes any sense. And we can have all the in, good intentions in the world, uh, but there's a certain way that uh, the Lord wants us to pray, and if we don't know that way, then we'll miss God all the time. Does everybody understand that? And so uh, it's very important that we understand that. So last, uh, during the last uh, message, we talked about prayer. We talked about how those disciples in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke, they were casting out devils and, and things like that. And then they came back to the Lord and, and saying, uh, Lord, even the, even the unclean spirits are subject to us through thy name. And so they were casting out devils. They were operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in other words. Um, but did not, still did not know how to pray. Because in the very next chapter, they asked the Lord to teach them how to pray. And so it's important if, if <laughs> uh, you know, that we understand what it is. It's more than just talking to God. You can talk to God. That don't mean God will listen and it don't mean that you will receive an answer. Does everybody understand that? We, so when they asked the Lord to teach us how to pray, he began to pray. He didn't say, well, just talk to God. All prayer is just talking to God. No, it's more than that. There's a whole lot more. Does everybody understand that? And so, to, and so, he, and so when they asked him to teach them how to pray, uh, he began to teach them how to pray. In other words, this is how you get your prayers answered. And so today we're going to go more into detail about that. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. And so, you know, the Lord don't want us to be, as believers, having hit or misses in our prayer life. Because, listen, those hit and misses, the times we hit, we on top of the world, and the times we miss, we wondering if we really saved, and God, is God hearing from me? And then it go from that to, is God real? Because it seemed like before he was answering prayer, but, you know. Listen, <laughs> the same way... Uh, when you ask any individual, if you face to face with them and you ask them a question or you're talking to them, you expect a response. You should do the same with God. You should expect a response. Amen. And so if you don't get a response, you done missed it somewhere. Does everybody understand that? God is not rude. <laughs> He'll talk to people that talk to him. Does everybody understand that? 
but he will let you go on in ignorance if you don't know any better, and you, you'll be just like Samuel, running right past him, and he'll let you do it, you see. And so here we're going to go more into detail about how, listen, this is when we get done the day of the Lord say the same, when we finish this message today, uh, you will understand how to get every single prayer answered, even if it's what you don't want to hear. <laughs> You know, that's another thing. Uh, you know, we'll, see, we'll start there. The Lord answers prayer. But sometimes we disqualify his first answer. As I did, I had, no, I hadn't heard from the Lord yet. <laughs> yeah, you heard from him. You just, you just didn't hear what you wanted to hear. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> All right, so, if we, so we're in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. We're going to start reading at verse 5. And it says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Does everybody see that? So that's one thing that will stop you from getting your prayer answered. Is you being as the hypocrites, basically you praying to be seen. Are praying to be heard, if that make any sense. That's, a, that's, in other words, praying with pride. Does everybody understand that? And so look at what he says. They have their reward. In other words, the, God is not going to reward them what it is they're praying for. Them being seen is their reward. That, that's all they wanted in the first place. It was just a show. Does everybody understand that? So that's the first thing. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy what? Closet, and when thou hast done what? Shut thy door. Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee how? You know, one way you can tell somebody has a prayer life is when you see them rewarded openly. David said, when he was talking to the Lord, he said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. How do we know that David had a prayer life? Because God prepared the table. In other words, God made provision for him in the presence of his enemies. If you didn't know anything else about David, you know, just read his Psalms. He's, he's talking to the Lord all the time. But if we didn't have those Psalms to go by, you could just look at his life and how blessed he was. And that lets you know something about his prayer life. One of the reasons, in other words, now the, the opposite of this is true as well. That if you do not enter into your secret closet, in other words, if you don't have a prayer life, you will not be rewarded openly. And I'm telling you, I think that's one of the biggest challenges of this generation It's a self-entitled generation. Want what they want when they want it, but too proud to ask. And get mad when somebody ain't, ain't just got the gift of prophecy in their minds. And just providing for them anyway. God don't operate that way. Does everybody understand that? This self-entitled generation, it can't get anything out of God. Because it's too proud to ask. Does everybody see that? Look at what that says. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is where? So you see the Lord there? Where is he at? Yeah, he's in secret. Does everybody understand that? And thy father which do what? What does he do? Seeth in secret. Does everybody see that? Shall reward thee how? All right, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Does everybody see that? <laughs> As who? The heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Lord, please, Lord. Lord, please, please, Lord. Please, 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 Lord. Is that how your children approach? That's how babies' children approach. Mama, please, 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 Mama. Please, Mama, give me some Cheerios or whatever. Does that move you? 
Not when I see something that you got something still in your mouth. The Lord is not moved by vain repetition. If you're praying in faith, you know he heard you the first time. It don't mean that the next time we get on our knees that we don't pray the same prayer. It just means you're not going to nag him, please God, please God, if just please God. That's, everybody understand that? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit prays through us. You think that Holy Spirit stutters? <laughs> no, he don't stutter. He know how to talk. Does everybody understand that? Is he the one saying, please, God, please, God? Does everybody understand that the Bible says the heathens do that? You know why? Because they don't believe they're going to get what they're asking for to begin with. So don't you do that. If the Lord put something on your heart and your mind to pray for, you pray for that and then just wait until the Lord. Listen, you ain't got to have a constant flow when you're praying. Sometimes it happens that way and sometimes it don't. In the times that it don't, if the Lord puts something on your heart to pray for, you pray for that and then you wait until he gives you something else. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> and so let, let's, 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 be, let's be truthful in, in, in our walk with the Lord. Does everybody understand that? You don't have to be rapping to pray. It ain't got to be on beat or anything like that. <laughs> the Lord understands freestyle. Does everybody understand? <laughs> so look at what he says, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition. See that they're vain. Does everybody see that? In other words, for nothing. As the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now you just read, when you read this prayer from verse 9 to verse 13, that's a whole prayer in about 15 seconds or less. A whole prayer. Does everybody see that now? And then we read, we read when it was about time for him to go to the cross that he prayed for an hour. So you ain't got to, you know, you ain't got to pat yourself on the back because you done prayed for 30 minutes. You know, one of the things the Lord had trained me to do was not to look at my clock. When I first wake up in the morning to pray, usually it's about three, between three and four o'clock in the morning. Don't even look at your clock. Just go pray. So you're not tempted to look at it when you come out of your secret place. And, and figure in your mind how long you've been praying. Okay, so I'm doing good. I, I prayed for 30 minutes or an hour or so. Don't, don't do that. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> and so this whole prayer is, is less than a minute. Everybody see? All right, so let's. Let's read there, verse 8. It says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Everybody see that? So he already knows what you're going to ask for. He already knows what you need. So you don't, you don't have to come to him, making him try and make him, to make him try to see the urgency of it. He already knows. He was a man at one time, and he understand what it means to be hungry. He understand what it means to have lack. You ain't got to pull his coattail and let him hear your stomach growling. He knows what all of that is. But I think it's very interesting. Let's, let's, let's read verse 8 again. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Now. This is where the self-entitled generation stopped reading. But look at what verse 9 says. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Everybody see that? Get rid of that self-entitlement. So you know what that says? God can know you have a need, and if you don't ask, it might, you might not get it. He knows what you have need of, but after this manner, pray. 
Does everybody understand that? Does everybody see that now? Isn't that something? <laughs> he knows it, but what kind of father is he? Somebody come get this for me, please. What kind of father is he? Come on up here. Come on. Thank you. What kind of father is he? If he knows that you have need of something and he just don't give it to you. The kind that don't want to raise brats. Does everybody understand that? The, he said, I own the cattle on a thousand hills, not you. <laughs> you don't own those cattle, he does. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> so we still have to pray. You can have a need and you can assume, well, God know I have a need, why he's not providing. The question is, are you praying for it? Does everybody see that? So look at what he says. After this manner. Isn't that something? Now, you pay close attention to that. That's the name of this message. Pray after this manner. Look at what he says. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Does everybody see that? Now, we have to, most of us, we memorize the Lord's Prayer by the age of five. And we just, it's something that we can just zip through. We can just about quote it backwards. We can zip through it, and, and you know, and that's the danger of thinking you know God's word. You don't. You, you, when, you get, when you get to the place where you are very familiar with God's word, then that's the danger zone because the danger of it is you'll miss the revelation of what the Lord is saying. Amen. You'll skip right over it and, and, won't, and won't have any idea. Does everybody understand that? So let's, how many of us know the Lord's Prayer? You can quote it. Isn't that something now? So he tells us, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Does everybody see? In other words, this is the pattern you follow. If you want to know how to pray, if you want to get prayers answered, this, in other words, pray after this manner, in other words, use this pattern. And, you know, growing up in church, I've heard people, they pray this prayer, this exact prayer, and then they go right into whatever it is they want to pray because they feel like, well, the Lord said to pray this prayer, so I'm going to pray this prayer exactly the way he said it. And, and then, you know, and then I'll pray on top of that. But I've done what he told me to do, except you didn't. This is the outline. He's not telling us to pray this prayer every time we pray. This is the outline. It's some stuff in here that he wants us to see to help us in our prayer life. Now this, if we will pay attention to this, we will get our prayers heard and answered every single time. But again, you have to be prepared to hear something that you might not want to hear. Amen. Does everybody understand that? All right, so look at what he says now. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Everybody see that? Our Father, which art in heaven. Where is our Father at? Now, why did he say which art in heaven? Because there's another Father. You have to make sure you're talking to the one that you want to talk to, that you want to hear. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, there's another daddy. It's another one. And, and you know that that other one ain't in heaven. So you have to make sure, so you have to make sure you get the address right. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, sacred or holy is your name. Now, that's, that's where we start, acknowledging our relationship with him, that he's our father. And basically, you, you have to, you know, you don't come before a king without honoring his position. Does everybody understand that? Amen. No, you don't come before that holy God like y'all, you know, grew up together. And we're playing on, on swings in the third grade together. 
Does everybody understand that? In other words, this is, you know what this is telling us? It's not, it's not saying that the Lord need to hear all your accolades about him and your props. It's talking about your honor and respect and reverence for him. You come, come to the Lord with reverence. Does everybody understand that? Not like he owe you something. You come with reverence. We're not talking about going down a whole, his whole list of titles that some people got plaqued on their wall somewhere. He, he knows who he is. He knows what he called himself in his word. So he's not talking about going, if I just, listen, you see how people can get caught up? You know, it's got churches all over the world that tomorrow they're going to be going over that whole list of titles and God ain't hearing none of it because he know who he is. He made himself what your list is. <laughs> so you, you going over the whole list and hoping you don't miss anything, that ain't, that's not appeasing him. Does everybody understand that? You, you know, <laughs> you'd have to think that God can be lifted up in pride some kind of way. He's already at the, at the pinnacle of anything in this world and anywhere else. He don't poke his chest out because you're coming up to him with a bunch of titles and sin in your life. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? You know what he told the children of Israel when they got big-headed and cocky about bringing him, him offerings and, you know, and, and sacrifices? He said, I own all the sacrifices that y'all bring. Y'all ain't doing nothing. That's my stuff anyway. <laughs> so everybody understand that. So don't you can't get big headed because you know all the titles, El Shaddai, and you know. And don't believe none of it. <laughs> you know, sometimes I believe that we we done done ourselves a disservice because we act so fake in the world. We so we think we got all every situation figured out, and we just you know we just got the formula. If we just and you're not gonna pimp God, I can promise you. You have to come to Him like you got some sense. Everybody understand that? Like He like He know you. <laughs> And not the person that you're trying to present, but he knows you. Does everybody see? So look at what he says, verse 10. Now this is the part we really want you to pay attention to. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is where? So the first part of the prayer is you recognizing God and making sure that you know, you're talking to who you're supposed to be talking to. But look at what verse 10 is. That's the first request that the Lord makes. He's asking that his kingdom come and that his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is what, so, and pretty much the rest of the prayer, that's what it has to do with. And we'll go over that more in detail at another time if the Lord say the same. But look at the first thing, the first thing he says when he get, when he get out of honoring God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. That's, that's what he's praying. That your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so this is the manner that we're supposed to that we're supposed to pray after. Pray after this manner. What manner? The fact that something has already been laid out in heaven, a pattern has already been laid out in heaven for my life and for the life of whoever it is I'm praying going to be praying for, and we're asking you, Lord, that you would allow that to manifest in this earth. But you know, here's the problem with a lot of our prayer lives. It's got to, it's our will. Our will. And we could spend two hours, three hours, praying and asking God for our will. And then wonder why we don't get that prayer answered. 
Or, and listen, and, and most of the time we're not looking for that prayer to be answered. We want our will. And if it's not my way, then I don't want it any kind of way. Does everybody understand that? We have to be very, very careful about what we pray for. You know, when people pray for to grow in the Lord, what they're praying for is problems. Because you're not going to grow without problems, I can promise you that. Amen. You're going to have to have some opposition. It, 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 there is no other way to grow. Amen. No other way to grow in the Lord without the devil running behind you. Amen. Does everybody understand that? If you could take one of these children, one of these young men in here, and say, just, just run from this corner to that corner. Go out in the street and run from this corner to that corner. They might be able to run fast. But you know what makes them run faster? When, when they're racing against somebody or a dog is behind them. You don't know how fast you can run until the devil's behind you. <laughs> but if you're the only one in the race, you can jog. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? So this is saying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, you know what that means? That our first priority should be doing God's will. That should be our mindset when we pray to the Lord. Lord, whatever your will is, that's what I'm willing to do. No matter how uncomfortable it is, we have to be willing to go into some, some places we are not aware of. That's naturally and spiritually so. We have to be willing to allow God to pull us out of our comfort zone. Amen. Amen. Does everybody understand that? And so we have to, even if we don't know God's will, you know, up until a, a certain point, we have to be willing to just allow God to do what he want to do in our life regardless of how it looks to us and regardless of how uncomfortable we are and regardless of how we feel about it. We have to be willing to press on. Does everybody understand that? So, let's, so does everybody see that? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is where? Now, in heaven, there is no opposition. In heaven, everybody's saved. Does everybody understand that? And does everybody understand what I mean when I say that now? In heaven, there's not a child that's born that's not going to heaven, no matter how long they live. But in the earth, we have principalities to deal with. And we have to ask God, God, the same way you want it, the same way it's done in heaven, let it be done here. Does everybody understand that? You know, I've seen people lose their lives behind not being in the place God wanted them to be in. I've had a, I had a, a friend that, who the Lord has showed me years ago, he's going he's gonna to leave this world because he's not where he's supposed to be. In heaven, the fellow was supposed to be in Tennessee. In earth, he was in a whole other state. And because of that, the devil was able to get to him. Does everybody understand that? Now, I know we might not like it, but I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, we all like that saying and like that quote, the safest place to be is in God's will. <laughs> yeah, it, that's re that sounds real good until we have to live it. That, that's a, that's a, a true statement. The safest place to, place to be is in God's will. Amen. And I'm telling you, that's something that people don't like to hear. That you, you know, and a newsflash, God has a will. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? God has a will. And so that's, and, and for us, so for us to pray this prayer, we have to believe that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is where? So you got, so think of it this way. You got two parallel universes running side by side. 
One of them is what God's will is. The other one is, is the will of mankind, your will. Now, you have to ask yourself, are you running parallel to that or are you running away from it? What does your will look like in comparison to God's will? Does everybody understand? I'm, now, if, 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 you, if you ain't willing to submit your will and make your, make your life line up with the way heaven have lined it up, you, you, you can forget about this. The rest of this message ain't for you. I'm telling you how to get prayers answered. When you pray according to God's will. Amen. Okay, let's go look at that. Let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of 1 John. And then we're going to show you an example. Fifth chapter of the book of 1 John. We're going to start reading. Verse 13. Is everybody there? All right. It says, These things have I written unto you, that ye believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Isn't that something? I, I, let's read that again now. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, as believers, you ought to know where you're going. You ought to know who you believe in. Does everybody understand that? You, we are supposed to have confidence. Let's read verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Does everybody see that? You know, God is not moody like we are. How many of you, when you come in this, in this sanctuary, you, you stay outside and you, you tap your, your foot on the, on the floor to make sure it ain't given? You got confidence. And you know this floor is going to hold me until I get to my seat. Then I'm going to sit on a bench that's going to hold me. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk back out on the same floor. It's going to hold me. It's not going anywhere. It is solid. And we ought to have that same confidence in God. Amen. God is not shape-shifting. He is who he is all the time. That don't, he don't, he does not change. If he answered your prayer a year ago, he'll answer it again. And some kind of way, if you feel like your prayer haven't been answered, then he's not the problem. Amen. It might just be he answered you and you just didn't want to hear. And you think, I'm going to just keep asking and I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore what he's already said. And I'm going to keep nagging him until I get what I want. Except if that's, if, if that's going to lead you to hell, you ain't going to get what you want. Does everybody understand that? All right, so verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to what? His will. What does he do? Every single time. Every single time. What's the opposite of that? And this is why we don't have confidence. Because we're asking stuff that's not according to his will. And maybe, maybe not, just depending on how he feels, he may or may not hear us. That's a sad prayer life to have. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> and like what we, what we were saying during the last message, some of us, we just got this mindset, well, you know what, just to keep from hearing no or not hearing you know hearing what I don't want to hear I just might not pray I ain't no use of me getting myself all worked up or you could just step into the realm of I'm gonna pray according to God's will and if I do that I know he's gonna hear me does everybody understand that 
Let's read that again, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. But it's according to his will. Does everybody understand that? You know what that equals? Us giving up our will. That equals, now it don't mean that you don't have desires that maybe you just don't know just yet that's not according to God's will. But we are that always, but I'm going to tell you this, when, when God's will outweighs your will, the Lord don't mind telling you, that's not my will for you. Amen. This is my will. Just Everybody understand that? But again, we have to be willing to hear no. Does everybody understand that? Now you think about what kind of child you were growing up. And you'll know that by your own children. Yeah, that's how you know how you were. You might have forgot, but your children are there to remind you exactly the way you were. That's, that's guaranteed. And today you can't tell small children to sit down without them crying and having a heart attack about it. You say, Junior, sit down. That fella got a will. And when it grow up, it's going to do the same thing to God. Forty years old with children just like him. Don't want to hear sit down either. Don't want to hear what you got to say. That's, a, that's child abuse. Now you see where we get the term spiritual abuse from. Yeah, child abuse as children, when they grow up and become deacons and elders and pastors, now all of a sudden it's spiritual abuse. What? Being told something that I don't want to do. Being told something that go against my program. The Lord ain't told me that yet, and so I know I'm, the Lord is telling you. That's just somebody that just wants their way. You can call Now, I know there's a such thing. I know preachers overstep their bounds, but God never overstep his. God's got a right to tell you what to wear. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that something? We can accept parents that say, no, you're not wearing that little tutu. You're not wearing no G-string, nothing like that. And we accept it. You know, we might not like it. But then when we get grown and we outgrow God, and God say, no, sisters, you need to wear what pertains to a woman. My word says it. Uh, that's not the God I serve. They, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? <laughs> yeah, this done grew up to this with the same mindset. That's why the Bible tells us to train up our children in the way they should go. How, what way should they go? Being able to be told something without having a fit about it. Again, if you want to know how you were when you came to the Lord, look at your children. That's what God had to deal with. Does everybody understand that? So we have to move our wills out of the way. Does everybody understand that? Thy kingdom come, not your kingdom. You know the whole world is full of people trying to build their own kingdom. The whole world is full of people trying to build their own kingdom. But when the Lord prayed, he says, thy kingdom, your kingdom come. This ain't about me. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Does everybody see that? So the, the Bible says what we read here in verse 14, this is the confidence that we have in him. This, you want confidence in God? Do you want to see God move in your, in your life? Then do what the rest of this says. Ask him for stuff according to his will. Make your petitions known to him according to what his will is. Does everybody understand that? And you know, I, I, I share with you, um, 
you know one way. Now, God answers in different ways. And, and one of the ways we know when something's not God's will is if we have to fight in the flesh to get it. And I mean really fight. Does everybody understand that? Now, I'm not saying that the kingdom of darkness just lay down and just let the Lord just drop everything in your lap that he has for you. But you, you, you all have been living for the Lord long enough to know when you fighting against God. You, you, know, you ought to know the difference between when it's God's got his hand up versus the devil. Because the devil could have his hand up and you still making progress. Because God is behind you pushing you. But when God's standing in front of you, you ain't going nowhere. And God ain't going to even make you think that you're about to win. <laughs> you can forget about it. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, when God is against you and against what you're trying to do, you at a dead standstill. You ain't moving nowhere. Does everybody understand that? Let's go to the 43rd, 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. Actually, let's go to the 15th chapter. Let's, let's, go, let's go to the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis. We'll go to the book of Isaiah in a little bit. And we just want to show you this example just real briefly, if the Lord will. We're going to start reading at verse 7. It says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of, sure, of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. So does everybody see the picture here? This was one way that a covenant was made between what Abraham knew, you know, from his homeland. They would take animals and they would divide them in half. They would cut those animals right down the middle, and the animals would fall over. So you got, the, you got the left side of the animal here and the right side over here. And two people, when they wanted to make a covenant, they walked up and down between those animals speaking their covenant. So as you and the representative of Bank of, of America, Bank of America, is, is they, they going first, okay? So I'm going to give you this loan for $150,000, and it's going to be such, a, you know, 6% interest, and it's going to be over 30 years. And then they stand on one side. Then you walk up and up, up down. Okay, so I'm going to sell my soul for 30 years. I'm going to try my best to pay y'all back, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a soldier for the Lord, and I hope he come through for me. <laughs> But you know what happened in this instant? Look at what that says there. Verse 12, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. He didn't walk up and down nowhere. He went to sleep. And the law was letting him know, you ain't got nothing to do with this. That's how you know it's going to get done, because I said so. <laughs> you going to sleep. Let me show you just how much you're going to have to do with your, your people inheriting this land. Nothing. Just like you ain't up cooking when you sleep, you ain't doing nothing else. I'm the one that's going to, if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So the Lord is the only one walking up and down between those animals. 
What, what does that mean? This is the covenant that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, we ain't got to do nothing but ask. He's going to bring it to pass. Verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Does everybody see that? Where was he going to go? In what? In other words, he wasn't going to, what the Lord is telling him is, it's going to happen after you are gone. Your, your people going down to serve this other nation for 400 years, that's going, you're not going to see that. You're going to go to your fathers in peace. Does everybody understand that? Now, don't you know that's a part of our, our heritage as believers? And we see that all the time, but maybe we don't know what he's talking about. And David slept with his fathers. And Solomon slept with his fathers. Does everybody understand what that means there? It don't mean they were buried in the same graveyard. Does everybody understand that? The, the, your forefathers, the ones that made it to heaven, you're going to get to sit and talk with them. Whatever family questions you have, that, that would all be answered. Does everybody understand that? All your loved ones that went on before you, you're going to be able to sit and talk with them. You're going to be gathered, like what the Bible says, to your people. Does everybody understand that? You're not going to be uncles and, and grandpa this in heaven. It'll be brother and sister, but you're going to know who they were. The Lord ain't going to wipe away your memory about what, what was going on in his earth. They're going to know that's my fifth great grandchild there. Let me go talk to them. Does everybody understand that? All right. Just to give us an example of what heaven, part of what's going to be about. Verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Let's read that again. But in the fourth generation, they shall do what? For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Everybody see that? Now, you see how sovereign God is? He just gave us an example of his sovereignty. They're going to serve the Egyptians for 400 years. Why 400 years? Why four generations, in other words? Why? Why does it have to be the fourth generation? Because I'm going to use them to whoop the Amorites. So you see how you can be praying, Lord, will you please come through, Lord, please help me. If you don't do it tomorrow, then I don't know. Uh, it's some other stuff that's got to be filled first. It's some other stuff that's got to happen. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everything is spaced out exactly the way on time, exactly the way he wanted to be. But in earth, there's impatience. I don't. What's the Amorites got to do with me? <laughs> Everybody understand that? So we see what he said there. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Everybody see that? All right, let's go to the third chapter of the book of Exodus now. And we're going to read verse 16 and 17. Now this is God commissioning Moses, telling him what he want him to do. So the 400 years is up. Verse 16, it says, Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, everybody see that? And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the who? Because now that junk done reached me. Does everybody see that? 
Verse 17, and I have said, everybody see that? Thy will be done. What is his will? His word. I have said, I will bring you up. When did he say it? To Abram. Does everybody see that? He said it to Abraham. I have said. Does everybody see? <laughs> Were they there to hear it? These people were living, they, they were born in affliction. They didn't know anything about the promises. Well, after, it's 400 years now, so let's pray. They, had been, they were praying from year one. It didn't take them long not to like slavery. Everybody understand that? They know it didn't take them 400 years to pray. But God, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The Amorites junk done reached me now, and now I'm going to use y'all to spank them. Get over the 400 years. Amen. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> you know, when we pray, thy will be done, you know what we're praying? Lord, and everybody else that's going to be involved in it, let it all flow the way it's supposed to flow. It ain't, but we pray a prayer of just me, me, me. Lord, I don't want to do, deal with this no more. And the Lord said, it's got whole nations that you're involved in, you don't know nothing about. I, I got stuff laid out the way I want it to be laid out. This, ain't, this world ain't contrary to what you believe. It don't revolve around you. It don't revolve around you. I want to bless you here in front of your enemies. So quit complaining to me about having enemies. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> Verse 17, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Does everybody see that? So, that, so we see this is the second time he's saying that, that we read. He told Abraham what was going to happen, and now he's telling Moses to tell them, this is what's going to happen. Isn't that right? Now let's go to the 14th chapter of the book of Numbers. Now they're right there at the door. Of, of, um, <laughs> let's back up to the 13th chapter. And we'll start reading at verse 30. It says, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to. Well, we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And so we were in their sight. Everybody see that? So these are people. They got a prayer life, but it's not according to God's will. God had already said what he was going to do for them. But what happens when we have our own will... We think we can walk up and down between those dead animals just like God can. We think we're playing a part in it. And we don't know that it's all on God's strength to begin with. Does everybody understand that? All right, chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Isn't that something? 
And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness. Everybody see that? This, these are believers today. I got just a little bit of opposition, and I'm ready to go back out in the world. It ain't, this ain't worth it. I didn't sign up for this. And then wonder why prayers aren't getting answered. Does everybody see? Verse 3, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be prey, uh, prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Isn't that something? In other words, let us replace Moses. Let's vote Pastor Moses out and put in another pastor. <laughs> That's how it looked today. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Isn't that something? So you got two old men falling on their faces and two young men tearing their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Isn't that something? Verse 10, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. That's the only thing that stopped them from stoning those four men. They were picking up stones and aiming to kill Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Caleb. We're going to kill y'all because y'all led us here. Isn't that something? And you know, people still had that same mindset. Well, Brother Bowden, you said this about me. It ought to come to pass. Yeah, but how, what's your mindset when you're at the door looking at giants? I can't fight them giants for you. <laughs> Does everybody see that? And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be before they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a great nation and mightier than they. Does everybody see that? Does that sound like what we just read in the book of Genesis and Exodus? What do you tell Abraham? I'm going to bring your people back. What do you tell Moses? Go tell them I'm going to bring them into the promised land. Isn't that what he said? But now he's talking about destroying them. Let's keep reading. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest us, broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, and thou, and thou that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken. Everybody see that? So what's the, what's the key to getting your prayers answered? Praying what the Lord have already spoken. Amen. Praying his will already. Everybody see that? As thou hast spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression transgression and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation 
Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. Because you said it. You said it. That's not me. That's, that's your program. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. In other words, according to thy prayer. Not because you prayed it, Moses, but because I said it already. And you had enough sense to repeat to me what I've said. That's the reason why wishy-washy people don't get anywhere with God. A double-minded man won't get his prayers answered. Does everybody understand that? Verse 20, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit, with him and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Now, this is the danger of pity parties in the time of opposition. You can have what you say. Does everybody understand that? Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Does anybody see that? So everybody see what Moses did? He spoke to God according to his word. Does everybody understand that? Let's go to Isaiah 43 now. I want to show you this principle that Moses did and what God tells us to do. We're going to start reading at verse 21. It says, This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with an incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Now, pay attention, pay attention to verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. 
Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Does everybody see that? That's what Moses did. You remember, you know Moses, who wrote the first five books of the Bible? So he knew something about the promise that God had made to Abraham. And so when God was ready to destroy all of Israel except for Moses, Moses brought back God's word to him. You remember what you... You, you remember what you told Abraham? And of course, I know you remember when you were calling me and I was trying to get away from it and you got mad at me and telling me, go tell them people you're going to deliver them from Egypt and you're going to bring them into the promised land? Yeah, yeah, so you got to do it now. And then the Lord's response was, I have pardoned according to thy word. In other words, because you asked. Because, why? Because I've said it. You put me in remembrance of what I've said. You started off right, Moses. You said, I'm a merciful God because that's what I said. That, that's my claim. I'm merciful and I'm long-suffering. You see how you get a prayer answer? Not your will, but his. Not your word, but his. God, you're long-suffering. You showed me years ago I was, this was going to happen to me. When is it? What, you know, I, I, I hope I'm still on the path for it. Does everybody understand that? Not that's, You know, that's one of the reasons why the Lord gave you dreams about you? For you to put him in remembrance? Is it that God forget? No, you putting him in remembrance is you remembering. Do you know what I said? Amen. That's what it's really talking about. God ain't seen now. He know what he said. 400 years was what he, he had spoke to Moses about it. And to him, it was like a minute ago. Because he don't live in time. So somebody that don't live in time, they can't forget. But the question is, do you have enough faith to not only remember, but believe it and bring it to God? Does everybody understand that? And this ain't for the lazy Christian. <laughs> this ain't for the self-entitled one. Well, I already prayed that prayer. If God wanted to happen, it'll happen. Uh, yeah. We need to be like Moses. Lord, you said it. Amen. This is what you told me when you first called me. It, it's it's got to come to pass. Amen. I, I, I know you ain't a lie because if it, if it is, we're going to all disappear because my life is a lie. This whole world is a lie. If you spoke this world into, the, into existence with your words, the day God lies, everything disappears. We have to know it. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Now, that's one thing we can stand on. God's not a liar. We know he's not wishy-washy. So then the question is, did God really intend on destroying the people? Or was he, did he allow all of that to take place in, in what we just read in the book of Numbers to show us how we're supposed to pray? Put him in remembrance of what he has said. Does everybody understand that? Look, look let's read that. Look at what he's, so the first part is what we just read in the book of Isaiah. He's telling the people, this, y'all ain't, y'all ain't doing nothing I'm telling y'all to do. And then y'all living in sin. But then look what he goes to in verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Why? And then he tells us what to do. Verse 26. Put me in remembrance. If you want to save your own life, remind me of how merciful I am. Because I'm about ready to do something. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> Let me know that you really believe what I've said. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be what? Justified. And then he goes on, verse 27. Thy first father have sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. He's telling them, y'all need to get busy praying. I'm telling y'all how it's, how it's going to go if y'all don't pray in the opposite direction. Yeah, the only thing y'all can do is plead with me what I've already said. Isn't that something? Now, we learn that. We know that concept in the world. Mama, you remember that time you said next Wednesday you was going to take? Well, it's next Wednesday. 
<laughs> we have to do the Lord the same. Lord, you remember what you said? Okay, well, it's, it's that day. Everybody understand that? That's the reason why I said if I ever drop dead and I'm still wearing glasses, don't take the glasses off. Just take me straight on to the eye doctor. I wake up. <laughs> God's not a liar. Everybody understand that? And all throughout his word, you know what he have to remind people? You think I'm like you. You don't trust me because you think I'm like other people. You think I can lie. And I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, I'm, at the day that God lies, everything disappears. It'll be just like nothing ever happened. I'm telling you, our very existence it, it depends on God being the truth. Does everybody understand that? And my prayers, we'll know, we know now how to pray. We pray after this manner. After what manner? According to his word, what he has already spoken. Not just necessarily in his word, what we read from Genesis to Revelation, but also according to what he has spoken in your life. The worst thing you can do is say, the Lord told me to do this, and then go back on it. Amen. If the Lord said it, he meant it. Amen. And we'll live a whole wishy-washy life. In and out of what God says. In and out. Today I believe it, but not, it's not looking like it's going to pan out. So maybe the Lord said, no, maybe nothing. The Lord meant what he said. But look at what, what, what he tells us in his word. When he comes to this earth, is he going to find faith? He can't lie. Does everybody understand that? My prayer is that we'll believe that. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for what you spoke to us today. God, we pray that you will help us to take these things to heart, Lord. We know that you're not a liar. Your word says, let God be true and every man a liar. So, Lord, we come before you asking for forgiveness for the times that we may have doubted what you've said. Lord, help us to stand of surety on your word, Lord. Help us to hold on to the promises that you've given us. Help us, Lord, not to faint in our minds because things are not happening the way that we wanted them to happen. But help us to know without a doubt, Lord, that you fulfill your promises and that you can't lie and that this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we will ask anything according to your will, we will have what we are asking, Lord, because you hear us. And so right now, Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray that you will help us to move our own self-will and ambitions out of the way. Move our own doubts and our own questionings out of the way. Lord, so we can make room for your perfect will to be done in our lives. And we'll give you the honor and the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. That's all now. If the Lord say the same, we'll be dismissed to the back and discuss the things that we've heard. So right now you're dismissed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.